Good evening from San Ignacio Town with the 9 o'clock news. I am Angelique Zetina. In the headlines, members of Belize Chamber of Commerce vote for a one-day shutdown of business if government fails to comply with demands. Teachers' strike continued for an eight-day despite BNTU meeting with the Prime Minister. And Belize Education Project team works with schools in the Cayo District. Stay tuned for details of these and other stories coming up after these messages. Sometimes when people tell me I'm crippled and make me sad, I am not crippled. I'm not handicapped. I am not impaired. I am not slow. Words have meaning. Words can hurt. I am a person. I am a person. I'm a Here now is the news in details. The strike by the Belize National Teachers Union continued today across the country. Classes at most schools were interrupted and those where students were, were minuscule. At St. Francis Javier Primary School in Esperanza, the building was totally closed. A few miles away at the St. Barnabas Anglican School, only the principal was present. A few of the standard six students were in class and some form of teaching was underway. The rest of the school was closed as no other teacher or students were present. Down at the St. Hilda's Anglican School, all of the classrooms were empty and no teachers were present. Today's interruption of marked the eighth day of teacher strike which was implemented by the BNTU to force government's response to their list of demands centered on good, good governance. And speaking about that list of demands, meeting between BNTU and Prime Minister Dean Barrow was held this afternoon at the Biltmore Hotel in Belize City. We will have details of what came out of that meeting in our next newscast. And while most of the nation's classroom has been empty for the last week and a half, four students at schools administered by the Adventist Church in Cayo District have been opened. Teachers and students have been attending classes as per normal. This week, a group of teachers from the United States have been conducting, conducting education exchange training at four primary schools around Cayo District as part of the Belize Education Project. TNC News stopped in at the Seventh-day Adventist Primary School this morning to catch up with what the group has been doing. So we have 19 with us um, this time, and um, we're doing some of the similar kind of things we've always done, where we go into classrooms and spend that time teaching, co-teaching with the teachers in Belize. And then in the afternoon, we have workshops, and we divide them out by lower division and um, upper division and each teacher kind of has their own place that they go and work with the groups. You are, we're today at the Eden Seventh-day Adventist Primary School, but this isn't the only institution taking part. That's right. We have um, a group, a team of teachers here at Eden, and we have a team of teachers at um, Bullet Tree in um, at Bullet Tree Seventh-day Adventist School and Hills of Promise in Benke, and then we have a team of teachers at Buena Vista Government School. What has been the uh, response from the teachers that you're working with? Are they appreciative of the outreach that you're doing? I, I feel 
like we have a really good relationship with them. I think that we really try to look at them as colleagues and that it's really through solidarity and that we're working together and that there's not one expert and one person that's receiving all the knowledge, but we're really sharing it. And I think that conversation really helps that relationship. I also think um, having come here as much as we have, this is my 10th time here, um, and having so many of the teachers come up to the United States because we bring a team of uh, teachers from Belize up to our homes, I think the relationship is a good one so that we really can have those good conversations with each other. The chief education officer visited with you this morning. What was that like and what was her response? She's um, really been such a good supporter of us for a long time. She herself has come up to Colorado uh, and visited our classrooms when the Belize teachers have come. She seems um, just as expressed appreciation. Um, I've certainly expressed to her how incredible her teachers are. Um, she probably knows that, but I'm just in awe. She was um, happy that you know we are talking about things that I think everybody believes is better for instructional practice, differentiating and meeting kids' needs. Now, you all are not just doing arts and crafts like people seem to think that whenever you come from the U.S., that's all you come to do in the classrooms here. <laughs> you bring your Google eyes and glitter, right? Yeah, no. We're really looking at ways to differentiate writing instruction and reading instruction and really looking at comprehension in reading and how to really make that happen. So our conversations, as much as we enjoy the glue and glitter, um, aren't too much about that. They're really about how do we get sight words and how do we get kids to comprehend and ask questions of the text that they're interacting with and how we can get our kids to be lifelong learners and critical thinkers and really understand what they're reading. How long will the group be in Belize this time? A week. It's always one week here and then one week in April when they come visit us. So after this, have you already chosen the teachers who will go up next April? We actually haven't. We um, always do that. That's a, a balancing act. Part of it is the team that has really been impressed. Part of it is who the principals have really noticed and also their peers mm -hmm. who have really believed that these uh, teachers can come back and give great input. And the nice thing is that it's every year, so we're really starting to get um, more and more teachers. Like for instance, at Bullet Tree, of their nine teachers, seven of them have already been to the United States. So hopefully at some point everybody will get to go. What has been the response of the students to uh, your being in the classrooms? I think they enjoy, of course, just the energy of somebody else and different. I think, of course, they like the school supplies. I think that they also really appreciate and know that um, Teachers are across the world. One, one really fun thing is that we're all teachers, so we all have classrooms. So, <coughs> excuse me, our classrooms back in Colorado have designed um, learnings for the kids at Belize, and they do a sharing. And, and I kind of want to point out it's not back to the glitter and the, you know, Google eyes or whatever, that the students in the United States have designed things like critical thinking maps and how to organize your writing, those kinds of things. And um, same, when the, teach, when the students from Belize come to the United States, they're really talking about symbolism, symbols of Belize, and how that reflects their culture and their people, and again, getting past the arts and crafts. Good to have you back in Belize. It's so wonderful to be here. The Belize Education Project Exchange will culminate on Friday. During the course of the first quarter of 2017, a group of Belizean teachers will travel to the U.S. state of Colorado for a similar exchange. The inaugural meeting of the Special Select Committee set up to investigate the Auditor General's report on and nationality was held on Wednesday in Belmopan. That meeting was supposed to have a selected a chairman for the committee, but that did not happen as none of the senators present would take up the chairmanship pending instructions from their respective institutions. The government senators both agreed that they would prefer that the chairman of the committee come among the social partners. The second meeting of the committee is scheduled for next Wednesday, at which time a chairman will be chosen even if it is one of the government. Today, the People's United Party sent out a statement criticizing the government for what the opposition says is, and we quote, the apparent determination of the government to railroad the selective of an impartial and effective Senate Select Committee and to hijack the investigation, end of quote. The POP release goes on to say, and we quote, 
it is crystal clear that this UDP administration has no intention whatsoever of allowing objective scrutiny into the corruption within its ranks. As a duly elected opposition with a mandate to serve the people, we are dismayed that the government refuses to listen to strident calls for good governance. The demands are for the implementation of measures that would provide critical and balances in government and would restore integrity to a governance system which has gone completely awry. On Wednesday, at a special general meeting of the Belize Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the membership resolved that the chamber would not participate in the Senate Select Committee as it now stands. The membership of the business sector also voted overwhelmingly for a nationwide shutdown if the government of Belize does not comply with the demands for good governance. Even at that meeting, UDP operatives blatantly attempted to hijack the process, revealing to what debts the government will go to protect itself from scrutiny and to continue on this path of brazen corruption. End of quote. The PUP statement ends by saying that the party stands in solidarity with the membership of the Belize Chamber of Commerce and Industry in its call for a nationwide shutdown. The PUP says it also stands with the BNTU, our teachers, the utility unions and any entity that demands good governance and who are fighting for an end to corruption that affects everyone. You're watching the 9 o'clock news. We will have more of the day's stories for you right after these messages. Sometimes when people tell me I'm crippled and make me sad, I am not crippled. I'm not handicapped. I am not impaired. I am not slow. Words have meaning. Words can hurt. I am a person. I am a person. Welcome back to the 9 o'clock news. The Belize Chamber, Commerce and Industry has issued a statement putting forward its position regarding the Senate Special Select Committee. This follows a general membership meeting that was held last night in Belize City. According to the Chamber's release and based on resolutions voted on at last night's meeting, Senator Mark Lizarraga would only take part in the Senate inquiry if the committee is reconstituted and if the terms of the Senate Special Select Committee is strengthened. Based on the second resolution, the members of the Chamber of Commerce agreed to a one-day shutdown of their businesses if the Prime Minister not proceeded with a signing commencement for the 13th Senator, activate the Integrity Commission and reconstitute the Public Accounts Committee of the House of Representatives. No date for the businesses was announced and the Chamber statement says that the Executive Council will set the date for that shutdown. The same Executive Council was directed to return to the general membership if there the need for further action. According to the Chamber's release, the Umbrella Organization stands ready to engage the Institute of Chartered Accountants in order to secure the participation of one of their members to serve on the Integrity Commission. 
that Institute of Chartered Accountants has already indicated that it would need to carry out proper consolation with its members to be able to nominate a suitable candidate for the position on the Integrity Commission. A brand new sport facility which will accommodate five-a-side football games will be inaugurated this weekend in Benkeviejo del Carmen. The inauguration of the synthetic field is scheduled for October 16th. Including in the day's activities is a five-a-side football marathon. All are invited to witness this uplifting event. According to the project owners, construction of the facility started about nine months ago. The synthetic field project was built at a cost of about $80,000. Four families in the Stan Creek District are the recipients of houses following destruction caused by the passage of Hurricane Earl in early August. The houses were handed over to the owners on Wednesday of this week by Minister of State with responsibility for National Emergency Management, who was accompanied by Air Representative Frank Mena and NEMA Coordinator Dang from Dangriga, Victor Castillo. According to a government press release, the houses were handed over to affected families in Santa Rosa Village in the Stan Creek District. The official release notes that the houses are a part of a total of 180 houses that are being constructed by the government of Belize through NEMO. More than 60 of these houses, according to the official release, have already been completed. The government release explains that more than 80 roofs have also been repaired and more than 1,400 families assisted with materials to repair their homes in their four districts mostly affected by Hurricane Earl, namely the Belize District, Cayo District, Orange Walk and Stan Creek Districts. Nemo expects that the government's Hurricane Earl rebuilding efforts will be wrapped up by the end of November or early December. This is the news on the National Channel. Stay tuned for a look at the weather right after these messages. The weather was mostly sunny today, but change is on the way heading into the weekend. Here is the forecast for Friday.
And that is a look at the weather with information provided by forecaster Angelia Guy at the Belize Weather Bureau. To summarize the news, here are the main points again. Members of Belize Chamber of Commerce vote for a one-day shutdown of business if government fails to comply with the demands. Teachers' strike continued for an eight-day despite BNTU meeting with the Prime Minister and Belize Education Project team works with schools in the Cayo District. With the headlines, we end this edition of the 9 o'clock news. Thank you for joining us. I am Angelique Zatina. Have a good evening and a good night.